Thank you. Okay, it's live now. Still looks like people are filing in. Okay, we can do the intro now. Okay, we can do the intro now. Okay, thank you. Um, we'll be offering uh, simultaneous interpretation in Spanish during this meeting. If you wish to hear Spanish interpretation, please click the interpretation button at the bottom right of your Zoom screen. You will see a globe icon right after these instructions are read. If you're joining us via the Zoom smartphone app, select your language by clicking more or the three dots in the bottom right corner of your screen. Select language interpretation, then choose Spanish and click done. If you wish to hear only the interpreter and not the original speaker, be sure to click mute original audio. Please choose a language. Do not stay in the default. Estamos ofreciendo interpretación simultánea en español durante esta reunión. Si desea escuchar la interpretación al español, haga clic en el botón de interpretación en la parte inferior derecha de la pantalla Zoom. Verá un icono en forma de globo terráqueo que se encenderá justo después de estas instrucciones. Si se está uniendo a través de la aplicación Zoom para smartphone, seleccione su idioma haciendo clic donde dice More o Más en los tres puntitos en la esquina inferior derecha de la pantalla. Seleccione Language Interpretation o Interpretación del idioma, después elija Spanish o Español y haga clic en donde dice Done o Listo. Si desea escuchar solo al intérprete y no a, lo, a los oradores originales, asegúrese de hacer clic en donde dice Mute Original Audio o silenciar el audio original. Escoja un idioma y no se quede en la posición predeterminada. Back to you, Brad. Okay, I was just trying to make sure I put myself in the English room because I didn't see the little globe pop up. I can hear you, so I think you are. Okay, so I'm good. Okay, whoops. Uh, let me go back. Okay, so welcome everyone to um, our parent university on the introduction to primary years program. So tonight is meant to be a time where we introduce or talk about what the IB primary years program is, and then also how we, um, how we, use the IB framework and how we've adopted the program at our own school. So how it's tailored, um, every school that's an IB school um, does IB just a tiny bit differently, even though it is, um, it is very much the same across the entire world. Um, so tonight um, helping me present is Michelle Guarino. She's our assistant um, principal and I'm Corey Julius. I'm the IB coordinator for um, both the elementary and the middle school. Michelle was the IB coordinator before she became assistant principal, and I just wanted to also point out that Greta Bowders, who is our principal, originally was a teacher at our school, and then um, one of the original teachers, and then became the IB coordinator before she became principal. So there are quite a few um, very experienced um, uh, people, staff, and leadership at our school with, with the IB program. Um, I also included links on this slide, and this, these slides will be available on our website. Um, so I've included some links to the IB organization and to our own website, our own school website, where um, you can access more information about our, um, about our program. And then just I wanted to mention that um, the Q&A is not open tonight, but the chat is, and we'll be asking you to, um, if you'd like to, to um, if you have any questions at any time, I mean, put them in the chat or in any language and or um, also we have a few interactive activities we were hoping that you would participate with in the chat. Um, Michelle, did you wanna say anything at this time? I just put in the chat to just to welcome everyone and that we're really excited to share our experience with IB. Um, we both came to IB as um, educators and parents sort of simultaneously 
And so we loved it for our own children and we loved it for um, ourselves as educators. And we hope that you all love it as much as we do. So thank you for your time tonight. Yes. Okay, so first right off the bat, we wanted to ask you to put in the chat, um, anything that you, what, what do you think you know about the IB program or what, what have you picked up from conversations with other people or from your own kids at school or any other, you know, maybe from the IB website itself? Um, if you could just pop in the chat, any, you know, this is kind of a wondering exercise we do with kids a lot. So what do you think you know about the IB program or what do you know about it? Give you a couple seconds to think about that. Yeah, and I'm sorry about the block. That's my toolbar, and I'm not sure why it's showing up on the slides. I know sometimes that happens, and um, I'm trying to minimize it, but it's not hiding itself. Oh, maybe. Well, no, I don't think that's a good idea. Oh, here we go. High floating meeting controls. There we go. I think the block may have disappeared. But then that means, Michelle, I can't see the chat at all. <laughs> I'll keep monitoring. Okay. Has anybody happened to put anything in the chat about the question? Um, so I'm seeing um, uh, the IB attributes comes to mind. Okay, cool. Um, the teaching of different languages, IB traits. Nice. Any other risk takers and communicators that wanna add to the chat? Learning styles and styles of inquiries, intercultural education. Okay. Educating our children to become well rounded individuals, global thinkers, and globally conscious. Wow, nice. Um, encouraging more than just book learning, real world problem solvers. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, that was cool. Okay. So then the next question here is. Um, oh, oh gosh, now, okay, here it is. All right, here we go. Um, what do you want to know about IB? So I'm hoping that I will address some of, we will address those questions, but is there anything, any burning questions you have about our program at our school or about IB in general? Not seen any, what do you want to know yet? Okay, maybe give it another couple seconds just in case someone's uh -huh. typing. Okay, so just more details about the specifics. Okay. Um, the path, high school into college with IB. Okay. Um, what is known from longitudinal studies about how IB, PYP affects child development, achievement, et cetera? Mm -hmm. Is there a certificate graduation uh, that's different than a regular elementary and compared to other teaching approaches? Okay, good questions. All right. Okay, so very nice. Thank you for participating and, and sharing your, um, your thinking and your wondering and things you wanna know. Um, I'm gonna just do a quick video that is on the IB website under like these nano, little nano um, information things. You can, you can learn a little bit about IB. And this is kind of a, it's sort of basic information, but I kind of like the way it talks about um, the IB education and how it influences you as an adult. And not to say that other ways of educating, IB is really just about good teaching and, but also being internationally minded 
at the same time. Um, and so it's not that you can only be, you know, that IB is the only thing out there, but um, that the end that can achieve the things that it claims to achieve, but it is a really good way to do it. And so um, this is just a quick little, like what happens when you grow up, if you've been in an IB education, it's just about a minute long. So it's not a super long video. And I apologize. There are not, I thought there were captions. There are not. So um, we just have to listen to it. Lockie runs a successful fitness business and he's expanding. How has Lockie's IB education prepared him for this challenge? We prepare our community of learners to engage with complex global challenges through a dynamic educational experience framed by inquiry, action and reflection. Different models of inquiry are about fostering students' curiosity and encouraging them to take active involvement in and greater ownership of their own learning. Instead of simply presenting students with information, teaching through an inquiry-based approach means students can bring prior knowledge to the topic. Find out information and begin to construct their own understandings. In doing so, they engage with approaches to learning skills and inquirer attribute of the learner profile, as well as other attributes. Teaching through inquiry has the capacity to lead students to a deeper understanding of concepts through the construction of new knowledge. As an inquirer, Lockie continues to ask himself questions in order to find answers that meet his business and life challenges. Okay, so I can get out of that. There we go. Okay, so I don't know if you picked up on a few words in that, that video. One of the, the main words that pops out at me is construction and constructive. They're constructing their own knowledge. And we'll talk a little more about uh, the constructive um, approach to teaching and learning, which is a, a, a constructivism is a learning theory that IB really subscribes to heavily. So I'll talk about that in just a minute. Um, so um, other things that the IB program um, is, is different than other curricula, or at least that they define themselves as, um, and again, they're not the only program that does some of these things, but they do stand by these words. Um, so they encourage students of all ages to think critically and challenge assumptions. We try to do that a lot. Um, develop independently of government and national systems. So we are beholden as a public school to um, California state standards and um, Common Core and NGSS and all of those things. The, um, but um, we also um, develop independently and that's part of the, the IB program that, that brings it into our school is that we're, we're exploring other things other than just those requirements. Um, we encourage students of all ages to consider both local and global contexts. So you see that in a little bit of the work that I'm gonna show you tonight. Um, but yeah, we do, we you guys mentioned internationally minded and globally minded, and we do try to get kids to consider both local and um, um, national and international context for their learning. And uh, you also mentioned um, developing multilingual students, and that is a, a firm goal of, of IBE. So um, there is, I put a link on this slide, and maybe you can't see it because I just, my toolbar is back in the way. Um, it, uh, that, but it'll be on the slide, the benefits of why the IB is different. And there is a lot of, there is a, there's a section about research about IB on the IB website. So again, it's, you're trusting IB to have done the research, but they, um, they've done some pretty good independent studies on the IB program and, um, and, uh, and the benefits of the program. Um, so the next thing I wanted to do was show you the IB, um, the program of inquiry at our school. So specifically, how do we, um, how do we do the program at our school? So before I show that to you, though, I wanted you to know that our program of inquiry is created collaboratively. So a big piece of IB is that teachers have time to meet together in their grade levels to plan. So classrooms are not standalone. They are um, usually pretty uniform across a grade level. And 
if there are single subject teachers like PE or music or art, they're interwoven into the, the unit planning at, at, the, at the grade level. Um, there are six themes in IB, six transdisciplinary themes. We'll talk a little bit about what transdisciplinary means. Um, there are six themes that every grade level is sort of required to go through every year. Um, I'll, you'll see that in just a second when I click on the link to the to our program of inquiry. Um, they have to be, our content has to be globally relevant. And also uh, we follow sort of this mesh between all of the standards we need to follow um, because we're a public school in the United States um, with, with IB. Um, at our school, our curriculum is taught in both languages equally. So that is a little bit unique compared to other IB schools. They usually have a language component, but they do not have an immersion program. So um, we are not only balancing our standards in Common Core from California and the IB framework, but also a German immersion um, component. So that's quite a bit of um, balls that are in the air that are, that are being juggled. Um, again, that word transdisciplinary um, and concept and inquiry based. So a lot of the teaching and learning that goes on um, is within um, these kind of frameworks. And that's kind of the big, the big part of IB. Um, and the constructivist learning theory. So um, there are four or five main learning theories in, um, in pedagogy, in the science of, of learning and teaching, and constructivism is one of them, and that's one of the main ones in, in IB. I don't think I have it. Oh, I do. Um, our program is also regularly reflected upon and revised. So um, every single year and every single unit, um, teachers are constantly reflecting and revising and improving and getting feedback from students and um, and from each other about what's working, what's not working, um, and developing and developing new things. Um, and this thing I'm about to show you, you can actually find on the website, um, on our website. This is kind of a brief summary of, uh, of our units of um, inquiry. And you'll see that on this, on the left-hand side, we start with, um, the inquiry. So these are the six transdisciplinary units that go across every grade level. So every grade level has a unit planner for, for who we are. And here's the definition of what, you know, what does that really mean? Um, where we are in time and place, how we express ourselves, how the world works, how we organize ourselves and sharing the planet. Kindergarten does not have to do to do five units in a, in a year. They want them just to go a little deeper, deeper and not not have to rush. Um, and so every unit has a central idea, um, key concepts, there's that concept based inquiry. And so you're really making an inquiry into this and you're, you're not supposed to be centered on a topic, but on concepts. So um, again, sometimes content enters into our requirements with our state standards. So we have to try to interweave um, certain essential content into, into the IB um, transdisciplinary units. So um, they usually have an inquiry that's kind of set um, and they the lines of inquiry. And in this particular program, so at any time you can tell where your kid is, what unit are they working on at this point in time? So let me scroll down a little bit. And then you can see it spirals. So they're studying the same transdisciplinary themes, but they um, they um, develop in complexity as they move through the grade levels. Okay, so that's on our website too, and you can look at that, and we do have the dates there, so you can kind of see, oh, this is what they're doing this time of the year. This is just a summary. Then every one of these um, has a unit planner that goes behind it where, where teachers really do all of the learning experience development and keep track of the children's inquiry and their own teacher questions and their reflections and um, how it's tied to the learner profile and um, how the concepts are developed. So um, there's a lot of written work that goes on. So it's another kind of difference between us and other schools is we have our, our own written curriculum and um, a major part of that is that it's a living, breathing document. It's not a series of textbooks. 
um, or, or other types of curricula that are canned. Um, we are the authors of our own curriculum. Um, so um, that's an important different piece in IB that teachers are responsible for that. Are there any questions or do you wanna pop say anything at this point? I don't see uh, any new questions now. Okay, I'm gonna go through this again really quick. All right. So here is the here is a uh, an icon of an attempt to graph what um, our program of inquiry looks like. Um, uh, this represents the framework. And what I wanted you to do now in the chat is to maybe put down anything you notice about this image. Um, what do you either, what do you notice or what do you wonder about this image? So there aren't any right or wrong answers, just anything that stands out to you when you look at this image. Okay, thank you for sharing, Natalie, um, global. Okay. I apologize if you can hear my cat meowing. It seems like a lot to accomplish. Um, you are spot on with that, <laughs> diversity. Everything's connected. Cultural awareness. Inside out, circular connectivity. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think. Okay, that's, that's great. it for now. Those were excellent um, things to notice and to, and to wonder about. Um, yeah, so I wanna start with that um, inside out connectivity thing. So every one of the, there are four programs uh, I, that are under the IB, IB umbrella. There's the IB primary years program, there's the middle years program, the diploma year program, the diploma program, and then also the career related program, which is kind of new in IB, it's called the CP and the diploma years is called the, the diploma program is called the DP for short. But all of them have an icon like this and um, they all have in the middle, in the central part of the, the bullseye, you can kind of think of this as a bullseye, the IB learner profile, which was mentioned in that little video. And I think a lot of you are familiar with those 10 traits, um, being caring, we're principled. And actually I'm gonna show that to you right now. So um, that, is a, that is kind of the, the main, um, one of the main connectors from for the K-12 continuum of IB programs. So um, just wanted you to take a look at this. This is um, the mission statement is really translated into the set of learning outcomes. Um, they really want the program to develop students who come out of the program with very robust um, development of these of these traits. And they're very similar to a lot of other um, they're different words, but they're similar to a lot of, you know, there's a lot of other programs out there that have similar kinds of, of attributes that are trying to develop character, character building, pillar, the five pillars, there's, there's different things out there. But these are ours and they each have a definition and we try to explicitly teach them and um, practice them both as, as adults and as students and um, look out for them in our, in our learning and examples, et cetera. So here's a, here's a um, quick sample of something. I just sort of walked around the school and just took pictures quickly of things I saw that were samples of that, you know, kind of or part of IB. So this is actually in German. So this demonstrates our multilingualism too. This is kind of an explicit lesson about the, the attribute of caring. And you can see there's some other posters on the wall with other attributes. But um, so there, this is um, also an example of con some constructivist um, learning here because the teacher is, you know, not telling them what caring means. They're coming up with it on their own as students and then sharing each other's you know, ideas, making a, a graphic organizer, and that, that helps all the kids have a discussion and, and um, widen their knowledge of, 
of, uh, of whatever they're learning. So there's several things going on here. I know it's just sort of a simple picture of a, of a, of a, a word web, but um, there's a lot going on just with that picture. Um, okay, so let's see if I can get my slide and keep going here. Um, this is another picture of um, sort of a less explicit lesson on um, including the, the learner attributes. And this is another classroom where they, they talked about um, developing their community in their classroom, our class is a family because, and then there's different statements. I think they were talking about helping each other through difficult times. That's this one up here. Um, a lot of them say we share um, just little cute words. I just thought you might enjoy seeing some of the student work. Um, and again, sometimes these things happen in other schools, um, but they're definitely really important here. Okay, so I'm showing you this graphic again because I want to just sort of work the rest of our presentation. I'm going to kind of go through, we're going to work our way out to the outside of the, the circle. So I'm just going to keep showing it through each layer so we remember. So we've talked about the IB Learner pro Profile. Now we're going to talk about approaches to teaching and approaches to learning. So um, these are um, things in... Uh, this is the, the next ring that's important, and this follows them through the primary years, um, the middle years program, and also the DP and CP. So approaches to learning are skills that we explicitly teach to children and to, a, to young adults, teens. Um, they're developing these skills. These are often called lifelong learning skills. Excuse me. And so they're in, they're in several different categories. Um, they're thinking skills, self-management skills, communication skills, social collaboration skills and research skills. And there are like, I don't know, 80 or 90 that are listed in IB under these um, umbrella ideas. And then um, they're sort of subdivided like critical thinking, creative and transference. Um, Self-management is a huge one that we're working on, especially with the, um, since the pandemic, I mean, they're, they're always super important. I sometimes think those are the most important skills that we're teaching children. Um, to be organized, to understand how they're feeling and how their well-being is, that's the affective, and then reflecting on where they are and what they're doing and what they've learned. Those are just super, super important um, lifelong skills, whether you, you know, for education or just your own life. Um, approaches to teaching is um, kind of directed towards teachers of, in how they, how they approach learning and, and teaching, basically. So, um, uh, IB teachers are um, trained and um, develop their skills in um, inquiry-based instruction um, in focusing on conceptual understanding. That's where the rigor is in our, in our school. Um, they um, work on developing um, local and global contexts. So they are applying knowledge in many different places in many different situations. Um, collaboration again is huge. So collaboration teacher to teacher, teacher with students collaborating on co-constructing um, knowledge or learning or even the unit planner itself in the classroom. Like what are we going to study and what questions are what, you know, what are our lines of inquiry are going to be? And also teaching kids how to collaborate themselves. And that's part of the, the eight approaches to learning. Um, we also differentiate to meet the needs of all learners. Um, I, IB has changed their language on this. They call it more um, um, barriers to learning, removing barriers to learning and um, have a really wholeheartedly adopted universal design for learning or UDL, if any of you are familiar with that. So that's basically prepping, you know, prepping the beforehand, you're not changing things afterhand to, to accommodate everyone. You're trying to make your instruction as inclusive and accessible to everyone from the, from the get-go. So that's kind of our, our frame of mind. And then of course, like all good um, teaching, we're informed by assessment. So we're trying to, you know, figure out what, where are kids, what do they know, what did they learn, and where can we go next? So those are all part of the approaches to teaching in IB. Um, here are a couple quick examples of approaches to learning skills. Um, I just loved, I walked into a classroom and here they were talking about what it like, what is, what it means to be a mathematician. And we, we talk about this in the Millier's program too, like what are the, what do you need to, how do, can you be a historian? How are we a scientist? How are we a mathematician? And I loved, um, you know, the, the teacher transcribed these, but these are all things that the kids came up with. Um, what do mathematicians do? And it just struck me that a lot of them are self-management and research skills um, from approaches to learning 
um, I love, like they don't give up, um, you know, they persevere. That's part of the self-management. They try their best. They make mistakes and they move on. They use the right tools. I love that too. They're prepared. I love that they don't mess around with tools. <laughs> so you see, there's, there's some pretty funny ones. Um, any questions so far? Uh, I haven't seen any more questions, but I was just going to add that it's really powerful when you walk into some of the classrooms, you know, as young as kindergarten and first grade teachers are asking the students, what self-management skills do you think you're going to need in order to work together on this project right now? And the kids really participate in that discussion. And then oftentimes at the end of an activity, it's, you know, what skills did you use which one do you think was your strongest? Which one do you think is an area of growth for you? And so it's really something that we try and um, internalize for the students across our campus. Yeah. Definitely. Okay, so um, another part of, of the approaches to teaching is concept-based inquiry. So um, it's it takes a little bit of finessing to figure out if what you're teaching is a content topic or is it really a concept. So, um, and in, in our United States teaching training trainer programs, we don't often, you know, they're not focused on teaching concept-based inquiry. They're really focused on making sure you're covering the state standards and you're using good teaching practices, but very content and um, topic heavy um, and not concept-based. So um, it does take some, um, a, a little bit of a paradigm shift to think about teaching conceptually. Um, so first in IB, we do have a set of concepts that IB expects us to cover in the elementary school. Um, Michelle may remember what all of them are. I know form, function, and um, I think relationships, perspective. I'm trying to remember what they all are. Um, and then there are other sort of sub concepts under those types of things that are more content related. So concepts are big ideas that are usually one or two words. They're timeless, abstract, and universal. So this, I felt like this comic does a good job of kind of, of asking that question. So are we a concept or a topic? Okay. Um, so then uh, here's a couple examples of um, concept-based inquiry. So, and in different ways of doing it. So this is a second grade unit. Um, their unit was the, the sharing the planet was a transdisciplinary unit. Um, they're doing something called the title of their units, happy habitats and living things within habitats are interdependent. So they're really talking about the concept of um, interdependency and then using habitats as kind of a, a, a sub concept. Um, and you'll see again this inquiry. Um, so kind of similar to what we did. This happens a lot in our schools, the what I know, what I want to know. And this particular one is taking place in a in a in more of a personal individual way in a journal. I don't know if they did some of the brainstorming together as a class. They may have and then just um, all kind of wrote down each other's ideas. Um, and then you'll see that the what I learned column kind of what um, Michelle was talking about like what reflections, what skills did we use? Then we always go back and reflect, well, what did I learn? What did I wanna know? And what did I actually learn? Um, and so that hasn't been filled out yet because they're not finished. And then this particular um, packet is, is two-sided. So they flip-flop between German and English every week and they take their packet with them and they have part of the packet in German and part of the packet in English. They have that all planned out, which is, is, which is a lot of work. <laughs> um, the second page of well, the pages in the packet too, I just wanted to show that they're making connections. So, um, you know, trying to talk about what is a habitat and then showing, well, what would my habitat be? So here's a, a child sample of um, their habitat, um, which is cute. And they've labeled it like a, like a scientific diagram. Um, and then another page in the, in the, in the, um, in this pamphlet is to design a t-shirt that encourages people to uh, save the habitat of your choice. And this is kind of a culminating activity. They, the packet goes through various types of habitats and how they're the same or different and you know their characteristics, et cetera. So that's where the content comes in. Um, but then they're thinking about and making connections um, this is a kind of a nod to student um, action as well, that you know you could advocate for the habitat that you feel like needs to be um, saved or learned about. So that's another piece of IB is student agency and action, which we're gonna talk about in a minute. Um, 
loved this little example of learning um, on the wall there. Um, I think this is fourth grade. Um, they've been talking about so content wise in fourth grade. Traditionally, that's a time when you learn about um, Native Americans and, and, and learn from, about um, what was in the past. Right, and we know that indigenous groups are thriving today. And so, um, our school in fourth grade traditionally they do tend in California to cover um, indigenous groups that are part of the locale um, where the school is. And so, that is not necessarily unique to our school, but I like the way that they're organizing. Um, and it's also in German. Um, the, the different concepts, geography, shelter, clothing, and food, and kind of thinking about what's the different, what's the same, which is a, a great way to make connections. If I can just chime in, one yeah. of the ways that we make this global too, um, and it is, it's actually third grade for- Oh, thank you, Michelle. Yeah, that's okay for Native people. So normally, you know, in a typical school, you'd study Kumeyaay in third grade because we're in San Diego and those are the indigenous people in San Diego. However, since we're an IB school, then our students take that knowledge and they apply it globally and they end up choosing to study indigenous people of their choice from around the world. And so that's how we sort of take that local knowledge and we expand it um, to be more global in nature. And then this is um, this is another example of a wonder wall in, in fifth grade where they're discussing colonization. So they were, you know, thinking about patterns of colonization and then again, the inquiry, the questions they have. And so sticky notes are used a lot at our schools, both schools actually, to help um, gather um, uh, um, ideas from across the, the classroom. So everybody has some input and people can share their knowledge and their questions so we can learn together. Um, love this as well, uh, Three Little Pigs Engineering Challenge. Um, so uh, another just question, what can I use to build a house? The wolf, the wolf cannot blow down. So they were studying stories. And I, I think part of this is the, um, they're you know also studying like the beginning, middle and end and sequencing and things like that. And this is sort of more of a science-y design challenge. Um, so they chose their materials, um, which uh, is, you know, part of, part of designing anything plan. They made a plan, they created and improved in our design courses and middle familiars program. That's basically what the grades are based on are can kids investigate, can they plan, they can, they create, and can they reflect? So here they're already doing that in first grade. Um, I put down, it's also differentiated just because the, the teacher did not expect them to write or spell everything. The important part was to hear their ideas and to get that knowledge that's in their head, what they're thinking is, and just get it down. So you can see like the teacher wrote in different parts of the assignment, just to make sure that the, the child's um, thinking is clear and expressed. And, um, you know, we wouldn't have known their thinking if the teacher hadn't just gone ahead and written about it. So just thought that was super cute and cool. Okay, uh, one last um, conceptual understanding. So this was just within one discipline. discipline. Again, it's in German, um, but talking about uh, multiplication and just demonstrating basically nine different ways of how to do multiplication. And so really trying to get the concept and approaching it in different ways so that people have different multiple ways of accessing what is multiplication. Um, so again, that's kind of another a teaching strategy. Okay, so now we're back to the third wheel, um, agency, exhibition, and action. So this is where students really have, um, can demonstrate their learning, like they've learned something, now what are they gonna do with it? And so IB really believes, you know, if you've learned something, you need to do something with it. Um, to make your world a better place. And so we try to encourage that as well at our school. Um, it's been a little bit, usually we have um, set, we provide opportunities for actual service learning um, throughout the year. Obviously that hasn't been happening the last couple of years because of COVID. Um, but then we also try to encourage agency and action in the classroom. Just, you know, if you've learned something, what could you, you know, kids will ask if they can do something or extend their, their um, studying of something, or uh, Michelle might have some better ideas. I'm trying to think off the top of my head, but I know she's really um, 
promotes student agency at our, on our campus and probably has some great ideas about, about how individual stories about that. Um, so um, this is just a quick poster of, of different ways kids can, um, can show student agency and take action. I'll chime um, just a little bit about agency, yeah. um, Mrs. Julius, just um, as far as just choice, you know, giving kids choice. So, you know, we might have to teach, um, teach a certain standard, right? But then we'll give the students choice within that. You know, you need to show your understanding, for example, of multiplication, as um, Ms. Julius was showing in that chart. But you can choose the strategy that you're going to use in order to do that, because you need to use the tool that works best for you as a learner in order to show your understanding. And it could be in the same way, you know, in English language arts or anywhere else in the curriculum, just giving them that choice and ownership um, and agency, it gets them more excited about their learning. Mm -hmm. um, and kind of the culminating piece of that is the exhibition. So um, in fifth grade, um, there is a kind of towards the end of the year, uh, there's a culminative collaborative experience that all fifth graders undergo where they choose something of their own to explore and learn about. Um, so it's kind of a, it's sort of like a research project, but also they're, they're kind of taking a little bit of action possibly. Um, and it can be collaborative, um, just depending on the different model that your school uses. Um, in the past, we have kind of set the, um, the lines of inquiry, the, the kids will vote on it, and then they'll kind of choose whatever the majority of kids have, um, have chosen. The last couple of years, we've done a lot more of an independent in, in inquiry just because of COVID and being online. Um, and so they'll explore something they're really interested in and kind of think about how can I share what I've learned or why this is useful or, you know, advocate for something they think is really important. And then they have a platform to do that. Um, they they um, work through like a process journal and then they also share, usually with the last few years, it's been a slide show um, that they post on a Padlet. So when you get the slides, you'll see that there is a link here. And I just went ahead and included the link to our Padlet from last year. So um, you'll see that kids had um, various, um, really interesting, some of them really interesting um, explorations that they did on their own. And then they're just kind of trying to figure out how to, how to, um, to, to, to share that information and kind of why they think it's important to themselves. I think there was one in here. One of my favorites was something about um, finches having runny noses or something. And it was about taking care of your pet finch. So I'm trying to remember what that was, but um, so we'll be doing that again this year. I'm not sure yet if it's in person. I mean, it would be awesome if we could do an in-person exhibition again. Um, for the past years, we have not. So, and then exhibition prepares them in eighth grade of the Milliers program. We do a community project, and in the tenth grade, which we will have in a few years, they do a personal project. And then in the 12th grade is a culminating project that is their service as action. Am I right, Michelle? Do you remember what it's called? The CAS, yeah, CAS, yes. Community Action Service. Service, yeah, Community yeah. Action Service. So this is sort of the, the baby version of that. And they just continue to practice every few years, um, demonstrating their knowledge and learning and development um, from the years prior, little benchmarks. Um, okay, so moving on, we're going to do these two layers together. So this is obviously the content areas that um, IB wants to have covered, um, that they emphasize as kind of official content areas, um, but they don't dictate the content. They just want these kind of these subject areas to be covered in the transdisciplinary unit. So you can see these are the transdisciplinary units here, sharing the planet, where we live, and time and place. So I just wanted to show you quickly what that, I showed you the program of inquiry. Um, oh, and I wanted to show you, I'll show you this slide again, but I just wanted to talk about the PYP right now. So these are some different ways of, um, of approaching subjects and their disciplines. So in the PYP, it's, it's transdisciplinary. So a transdisciplinary um, practice is one that is sort of represented by, if you think of food, cake, 
um, where the ingredients, so you say math, history, art, are uh, no longer distinguishable and the result is something completely different. So you're kind of blending everything together and um, under, under the, you know, you're studying a concept and uh, lines of inquiry, um, you know, how the world works, and then you're just taking, you're taking everything you can and kind of trying to, to understand in all ways that you can, all the different modes that you could possibly understand those concepts. Um, and so you, you sh in an ideal IB classroom, you wouldn't necessarily have a schedule where you have, you know, math, English, reading, um, and um, that would be, that's more typical in schools that are not following um, a standards or content that you, they have to, like a private school, for example, they has totally free reign on their content. Um, again, we are kind of um, limited a little bit by, um, you know, California standards and content wise. So um, you will see, and sometimes um, some standalone subjects being taught in our school, but there's always the transdisciplinary unit that's trying to be tied back into and connected. So some examples of that, um, you'll see, uh, there's almost in every classroom, there's a unit board um, or an inquiry board and they'll line up these different, you know, concepts, related concepts. I didn't show the whole board over here is the, the, um, the unit title. Um, these are their concepts, related concepts, knowledge. And so you can kind of see that they, the kids are, you know, thinking about things this way and the teachers are too. And these are teacher questions. Uh, and very often they'll also have posted um, what are student questions about things. Um, this is another way of displaying, um, this was actually the student work and it's hung up in this, um, for the student. And so this is his packet that he's been working on every day. I can learn about who I am, what I can do and my responsibilities as a child. Um, and so they will work on this and I think it's posted up because it's finished and it's just kind of celebrating that that journal's finished, but you can see that the, the, the content is organized in this way. Um, Here's a kindergarten there. Um, this was their uh, a communication unit that, you know, you don't need to use words to communicate. So I think this is more of the end of the unit reflection and the kids were coming up and drawing and expressing ideas of how do you communicate without words. And so by drawing and painting and, you know, smiling expressions, etc. Okay. Um, and Michelle, did you want to say anything else about that? I actually just wanted to um, let you know we have about 10 minutes left. Okay. We are really close to being done. Okay. Um, and I wanted to leave have time for some questions. So the last big thing I wanted to just talk about was this constructivist theory. Um, so constructivism is a learning theory that um, people learn best in community. Um, they learn best, it's a, it, learning is social. And so, um, you're constructing knowledge with with peers so that's why you see a lot of that what you know what do you want to know and it's a it's a collaborative effort it's a it's a group effort um and so and there, a lot of the examples i showed you tonight have a constructivist bent to them i thought this was another really great example of um this is second grade again trying to decide uh, trying to understand sequencing and store and using stories and sequencing in stories and so this was and in german um, beginning, middle, and end, and they had a book that they were looking at, and this is the picture that goes with it. And then each child wrote what they thought was a beginning statement from the story, a middle, something that captured, summarized the middle of the story, and something that um, captured the ending of the story. And then they shared that with each other, and then they they sorted it out and decided which you know what, what worked the best, and then they they made a group um, project that kind of shows their thinking. So now the students. Um, you can see have, um, have shared their ideas. So that broadens everyone's ideas and reinforces for people who may have still had questions about what a beginning, middle end would might look like for a story. And then they have multiple examples that they have come up with. So they have constructed this rather than a teacher just standing up in front of them and saying a beginning is the middle of the story. You know, like there's, there's all these other different ways you could teach this, but, um, doing it collaboratively is, um, it, we, we think is a very effective way to do it. And that's what IB 
is thinking about. Again, here's kids beginning to construct knowledge. So um, this is a smart board. They're about to get sticky notes and start writing down these sentence frames, the earth, what do I know about the earth? What do I know about the moon? And what do I know about the sun? And so they're each gonna have a sticky that says the earth something, the moon something, I know something. And then they'll be sharing that with each other um, in the next part of the lesson. What does everybody know already? It's also a great pre-assessment. Lastly, international mindedness. Um, uh, we, a lot of that, as they get older, we do exchanges, et cetera. Um, and we, you know, try to bring in the global context all the time, but obviously our school is a multilingual school and we have native speakers that speak home languages from a, a lot of places, predominantly Spanish and German. Um, and German is used heavily in the classroom. So um, this is just another, um, they're learning new words that go with their unit and they're asking questions about what do you think it means? What does it mean? And um, they co-constructed that as well. Uh, this is a really bad picture, but it is the, um, during the German Heritage Day that we just had recently, um, kids talked about why, why do we study other countries? Why, why do we acknowledge Germany and I just love some of the, um, we love our families, we're good, you know, we're global citizens, we need to celebrate, you know, the things from other countries that um, help us, um, et cetera. So they had, they kind of came up with reasons about why it was important to learn about history in other places. Um, I'm trying to speed up here a little bit just so that um, we have a little time for questions. Um, so I did have a couple of slides about how we assess what we assess, which is very different than in other schools. So I'm gonna just um, say that assessment is an ongoing process at our school. Um, we construct learning goals and success criteria with um, students and hope to clearly communicate those. Um, we, we have learning outcomes, both from the state standards and um, IB and um, we use assessments both as a, a reflection of what has been taught and then what we need to do next. So um, these are various kinds of assessment we have. Um, teacher and peer formative feedback, student self-reflection is huge. Um, reflections are assessments often rubric based. Um, the report card you'll get in a few weeks is um, has comments and um, assessment related to these, to ATL skills. That's the purchase to learning standards, meant in English, German, math, PE, art, music, units of inquiry, learner profile attributes, whoops. Um, kinder and first grade, and I think several other grades have um, literacy and numeracy assessments. So just kind of basic, how are they doing with their letters or their words? We do map testing um, in third and fifth grade. So that's just a, um, kind of like the state standardized testing, but not with the state um, to just measure math and reading and language use. And then SBAC are the state standardized tests in mathematics, um, English language arts and, um, and science in some grades. Um, lastly, I just wanted to speak about um, what our continuum is. So right now we have our primary years program from kindergarten through fifth grade. Um, then you can transition into the middle years program for sixth through eighth grade. The middle years IB program is actually a five-year program that very, very few schools um, um, develop the ninth and 10th grade. So um, even San Diego High and Mission Bay do not have a ninth and 10th grade um, for year four and five of the middle years program. Students are actually outside the IB program. They're on a track to go to the, the DP or the diploma program. So once we get our school, which we are getting, um, in uh, 2024, those eighth graders who stay with us, hopefully all of them will, will roll into the ninth grade and that's the fourth year of the MYP. And in 2025, they'll be in the fifth year of the MYP in 10th grade. So they're still, they're still treated as high schoolers, obviously, but they, um, they follow the MYP curriculum. And then in 2026, we will begin our first um, DP diploma years program and career related program. Um, and then there's not time to talk about those. I will talk more about those next Thursday when I um, do a parent university on the middle years program. I'll talk a little more about DP and CP there. This is 
because we're that's getting closer to the middle years program. But we're very excited that we'll be able to offer that. Um, so that's coming up. So stay tuned for that. Um, and for the sake of time, I'm not going to go into this other than to say that we transitioned from transdisciplinary into interdisciplinary um, in middle school. So we start to tease out the disciplines a little more, the subject areas. And then by the time you're in the DP or the CP, you're supposed to be much more focused on um, developing depth in different subject areas. Uh, so that's in there too. How can families support the PYP? Um, use the learner profile. Encourage your child to ask questions. Um, support your child's home language, whatever it is. Cultivate global mindedness. Encourage your child to take action. Communicate with your child. Do what you can with what you can and model, model, model. All right, and that is the end, I think. I had a question slide. Okay, anything else? Just going back to the questions from earlier, um, I think you addressed, Corey, the teaching approaches. Mm -hmm. um, definitely, and um, talked about our continuum, what AEA will be offering in the very near, near future. Mm -hmm. um, there is not an actual certificate for the PYP program for the elementary school program. Um, I think that answers um, someone else's question. Mm -hmm. And then um, a parent was asking also about exchanges earlier. Can you, do you wanna speak a little bit to that? Yes, sure. Um, so in the middle years program, we have had in the past and continue hope to plan to have, we have a German exchange where German students come for three weeks and then we go to their school that's um, traditionally taken place, well, since the beginning of the German exchange with Gießen, a school in, um, in Gießen, Germany near Frankfurt. Um, and then um, we had recently, we've gone, done two trips to Spain, to the Canary Islands, to an IB school. So the, the school in Gießen is not an IB school. Um, I've been on both those trips to the Spain and the German trip. Um, they're both amazing. The kids learn a lot. I will say it is, a, it's a long ways away and I would not push your child to go on an exchange unless they really want to go because once they're there, they are stuck there. And if they're just not developmentally ready to do that, it's, it can be pretty tough on them, but it is an amazing experience. And um, I do like seeing other international baccalaureate schools. I think it's really uh, makes a good connection with the kids. They realize, oh, these kids are studying the same thing we are. Um, and then um, we also do a day, have done a day exchange with Tijuana, a private school in Tijuana that several of our uh, teachers, two of our teachers, well, past teacher, and then um, our Spanish teacher actually graduated from that middle school in Tijuana. And we've done um, day exchanges with them. Um, and we had um, part of a Chinese exchange started um, before COVID, and we'd had two years of uh, Chinese exchange students coming here, and we were just about to launch um, our first trip over to China right before COVID began, before we shut down. Um, I know that we are open to the middle school and pro um, most likely, uh, um, absolutely, the high school will have um, exchange programs with um, other schools. I know we're in conversation with middle school right now with a um, K-12 continuum school in England. I'm not sure if that will turn into an exchange, but um, they sure, they have a lot of interesting things going on over there. Um, so we're always gonna be looking for, for other opportunities to do exchanges and trips with, with kids. Um, because that's a, that can be a very valuable experience. I know that both the German and Spanish, the kids, it really makes an impact on them if they can speak language with um, other, other places that speak the language they've been studying. It really gives them a context for what they're doing, especially middle school students. They're not exactly keen on learning a second language in middle school. So it does, it does make them um, more motivated <laughs> when they see other people. Oh, this is a thing. People really do speak this language. Um, so yeah, any other questions? I think there was just uh, uh, wondering about um, looking at the silver lining of the pandemic, offering students 
another opportunity to connect um, via, for example, a pen pal pr program. I know at the elementary school, different teachers and different grade levels have done that over time. I can't speak to whether or not any of our teachers are currently doing that. I don't know if um, Corey is aware of that either, but I would definitely just um, share that resource with your child or your children's teachers and um, see where it goes from there. Yeah, I've always, I, I really think that we were really close to having a community project with um, the Canary Islands, um, our school, our middle school there, um, sharing our community projects and then just um, logistics, honestly, get in the way, especially when it's, and, and we were doing not a pen pal thing, but like we wanted to do some live Zoom and presentations and maybe some video recording and share that back and forth. Um, and then just the, the, um, the coordination just became so, so, um, technical that we just stopped thinking about that. So, but it definitely, if you have any ideas and you want to just give them out to your teachers, that would be great. Cause we're, we are always looking for those opportunities. So thank you everyone. Thank you for entrusting us with your children and for spending your dinner hour with us. I think we both really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mrs. Julius, for um, doing such a great job explaining PYP. And any questions, can parents email you? Yes, absolutely. Um, mm, do you want to put my email on the chat? Let's see. I, guess sure. I can do that. Okay, you got it. Okay. Y, y hablo español también. Entonces, si tienes preguntas en español, puedes escribirme también. Okay. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Have a good evening. Bye, everybody.